I wrote seven names, and Bill Miller's actually 92. And that right there is called Monster because this is more. No. <laughs> Looking at how I pay myself, it's not based on how I want. It's strictly based on feeling and emotion. And not necessarily those good emotions. The one here on the left, that's anxiety. The one in the middle, paranoia. And that last one there, I was having a weird day with toothpaste. I worked and worked and worked until the day came where I got accepted into the Academy in Florence. Now, now this is kind of the mood board of what I thought my life was going to be like over there. I was going to learn anatomy, we were going to look at the masters. My biggest problem in life was probably going to be related to carbohydrates. And things went sour real quick within the first few weeks. There was a lot of conflict between me and the faculty, with the other students. Uh, I came from a uh, school where the idea of thought was to be very critical and to analyze everything to the max. Whereas then it was very much rigid and stayed in the past. And this resulted in me kind of being treated, if they were Hogwarts, I was basically the Voldemort. I was the one who not be named. Now, I tried really hard to kind of find a solution because I was at my all time long. I didn't even want to wake up to go to school at that point. And that was the first time that's ever happened to me. So I tried, you know, looking in the mirror, I'd pick myself up, I'd say, Armando, don't be upset, eat more spaghetti, you're in Italy, we can do this. <laughs> and it didn't work, and naturally I went to more toxic coping mechanisms, drugs, sex, not so rock and roll. You know, there's guys who always say like, oh, I tried to drown my demons, but my demons learned how to swim. My, my demons had their own cruise ship, okay? We, they had little Hawaiian shirts, frilly drinks, with little umbrellas, I mean, it was a very, it was a strange time in my life, but salvation did come, and that came in the form of a studio. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. I mean, I say studio, in reality, it was a hallway, it was a corridor, but it didn't matter, it was my corridor. And I tried to find a compromise with the whole schooling system that I would go to school during the day, and I'd paint at night. And I'd find some sort of balance, because at this point I felt so isolated alone, that I came so far from Canada, I gave up my entire life in Montreal, that I had to find something, I had to pick up something from this, I couldn't just fail like that. I didn't come this far to only get this far. <clears throat> so with all that being said, I was naturally pushed towards myself, and every day, I'd look in the mirror, and I made my first self-portrait. That. <laughs> and I saw some of you realize, like, <laughs> I know, right? I had the same reaction. I didn't even know what to say when this came out. And I made it. I made it. Even posting that on social media, I was freaked out. I remember having my phone. I took it. I threw it out the window. I took my laptop. I put it in the microwave to block all the Wi-Fi signals because I didn't want to hear about it. I was so scared. This was the first time I took something so vulnerable and also not a flattering image of myself and put it out there for the world to see. And keep in mind, before I left, the last paintings that I did, with these ones here. So that's a big jump. And thinking about what are my friends going to think? What's my family going to think? I also had professionals who were scouting me at the time. How do I explain this? It was a lot of chaos and uncertainty. But between all that, there's one thing that I knew that was positive. I felt good. I felt relief doing that. So I continued. I kept making portrait after portrait. And bit by bit, I started to understand that all these negative emotions, you got to give them their time of day. you got to honor them. You can't just paint over a fake positivity. You know? So if you're angry, be angry. If you want to cry, cry. I love crying. I mean, every Saturday I pencil that into my agenda to cry. Like, but today I'm going to be doing a TED Talk, so that can't happen. And when I say cry, I mean have like a good cry. Not the Hollywood stream, glamour tear, just like, ah, ah, ah. 
like a real type of ugly crime where you can't keep track of all the fluids coming out of your face type of crime. Because all these emotions that we have, they're there, they're not permanent, and also they're not fat. And I wasn't the first one to start diving into this idea of going with inside myself and seeing how you know, the, emotion, the emotional anatomy of myself was formed. I kind of started to look at it as balance and seeing it as, you know, a meal. For example, you would have a balanced meal of protein, your carbs, your veggies. You wouldn't just saw and have the good times all the time. That'd be like saying, hey, I'm going to eat ice cream for the rest of my life. Great idea if you're six years old and you don't know what diabetes is. It's going to have some long-term problems. So if we look at the greats, Frida, Rembrandt, they were doing this way before I was. And they didn't just paint themselves because the model didn't show up. They were doing it because they were looking at how they were feeling, what was going on inside themselves, and putting that on canvas for us to look at. Now, one quote that stuck with me since Montreal to where I am today is, <laughs> being an artist means never healing your own wounds and at the same time, endlessly exposing them. Yeah? Yeah. Bill John. Yeah. <laughs> so, as I kept going, I realized that this was self-care, and I was improving in my personal life. That my communication skills got better, my relationships were getting stronger, I was able to accept myself. And at the same time, I was also able to configure the bad parts, because self-love has no value without self-awareness. So I kind of see the blueprint, and I find parts being like, ah, that needs to change, gotta get rid of that. This is, eh, all right, well, we'll get back to that. This part here, that's, you gotta get rid of that at some point. And while I was doing all of this, and in my own little bubble, people started reacting to what I was doing. I received messages from others saying, hey, that last self-portrait, I didn't know anyone else saw themselves that way. I thought I was the only one. And I realized that what I was doing was addressing a bigger picture, and that's the idea and the notion of mental health. And while I'm here today talking to you about how painting has helped me, I'm not saying that you gotta get rid of your doctor, you gotta get rid of your prescriptions and finger paint the pain away. That's not at all what I'm saying. Having a mental illness or having mental issues is absolutely not your fault. Not at all, and there's so many resources out there. And this is a discussion we should be talking more and more about. I mean, being in the art field, when one brings up Van Gogh. Van Gogh was sick, yeah, he was, but he didn't stay sick. He ended up checking himself in, and he ended up producing the most gorgeous work of his career. And talking about me, well, I came up with a rough upbringing. I had a mom who was abusive. I had a father who was absent. Also, on top of that, went to an all-boy private school, which was just reeked of toxic masculinity. But after that, I did therapy. And 10 years of it, and I still do it. And I'm fine from the looks of it. Now, continuing on with how this went, I mean, do I have any regrets on how things turned out? No. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. But I like to say I'm more stable than I was a long time ago. Was this an easy process? No. But was it worth it? Oh yeah. It was very much worth it. So next time that you're feeling something, that you have a negative emotion, and you're feeling sad, you're feeling angry, it doesn't make you a monster. Not at all. It makes us human. It exists. It's balanced. And you have to let it go. So maybe the next time you're going through a rough patch, you can paint, you can sculpt, you can draw, you can dance, you can make music, you can do whatever you want. And no one has to see it. You can keep it all to yourself, you can write a journal, burn it, and then eat it. Okay, maybe <laughs> don't eat it, because then if you eat it, I mean, that's not kind of good unless you're writing on like a piece of ham with mustard, then fine, but if I was your roommate, that'd be kind of strange, but I don't judge. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, at the end of all this, what I want to tell you is that next time you're feeling blue, you're having a horrible day, create about it. And you might just be surprised with the results. Thank you.